Good afternoon. Uh, hi. My name is Kyung Jun Kim from Korea. Uh, uh, the title. Okay. The title that I would like to pre pre present today is uh, the introduction of Chinese characters into Korea. And the subtitle is the critical review on the role of a uh, low line commentary uh, in Japan's pronunciation, a la kro kun. And uh, before I start uh, my main part, so I'd like to survey my the basic idea. Uh, the, the main theme of mine is the diffusion of Chinese characters into the other the regional areas. And the period that my paper will cover uh, will be the incipient stage of the diffusion. Uh, and, and the method that I would like to use is the historical perspective. And everybody knows that uh, the high culture will flow to the, the lower culture, the lower the region. Uh, but uh, as a historian, uh, I like I, I like to to analyze not only that this kind of the, the principle, uh, the cultural flow, but uh, I rather focus on the background or concrete agent for this diffusion. Diffusion, and uh, lastly, uh, the area that I like to cover is the Korean case. And though the Korean case it just uh, occupies one corner of the the continent. But uh, I think this Korean case can be applied to the uh, other areas. Okay, uh, now I'll start my the presentation. And I'll, I'll read some parts of my paper. And, uh, and, and sometimes I like to show you my PPT, just for your easy understanding. And yeah. First, uh, the first chapter introduction. That prior to the, the invention of Hangul, or the Korean alphabet, in the 15th century, the Koreans wrote exclusively in Hanja, uh, Kanji, uh, or Chinese characters, which they borrowed from China. And Chinese characters developed in China to suit the particular linguistic needs of the Chinese. So hence, uh, when Koreans borrowed Chinese characters, uh, their usage it turned out to be extremely inconvenient because of the linguistic structural differences between spoken Chinese and spoken Korean. To help overcome some of the differences, the Koreans developed a writing system called Yidu, in Chinese, uh, Lidu, and to represent the, the old Korean language by borrowing Chinese characters. However, it was not so easy to simply borrow them and to change the specific elements of them only when necessary. So much time and effort will, were required before Chinese characters and the linguistic traits of the people on the peninsula would come to terms with each other. When users could uh, fully formalize themselves with the Chinese borrowing writing system, in other words, there should have been a long, long process of linguistic contact and adaptation. Uh, in understanding the acceptance and the transformation of Chinese characters in Asian times in Korea, in, in Korean Peninsula, the key point rests with the differences in linguistic traits and attendant uh, inconveniences. Li Du, Yi Du, uh, obviously was one uh, such byproduct. However, while overemphasizing differences, the consideration about the process has been omitted or not so reduced. A considerable process of acceptance is to be presupposed if transformation are to occur. With this in mind, this paper will explain the introduction of Chinese characters into Korean Peninsula. It does so by trying to uncover the background when transformation of Chinese characters occurred in Korea and by discussing when and how they were introduced and the extent to which they were used. So uh, let's, uh, let me briefly survey again. So, so uh, there was uh, linguistic differences between spoken Chinese and spoken Korean. So uh, in result, uh, there was uh, inconveniences for Koreans to use Chinese characters. So 
at last, eventually, the Yidu, Lidu, have burst. So uh, what I'd like to do in this presentation is uh, to analyze the background of its birth, especially with the help of with the case of this Lolan commentary. Okay. And uh, for your understanding, I'd like to review the previous studies, uh, but I'll be on the, the critical perspective. One of the major reasons that the study of the introduction of Chinese characters is largely stagnant is because of a misunderstanding of Korean history. Now, existing studies find uh, the origin of Korean history with Ko Jo San and Ko Chang Xian, while placing the Han coming race inside the Chinese history. While this paper does not intend to redefine the scope of Korean and Chinese historiography, but an existing uh, historiography is obscured the relationship between the Han commanders and the acceptance of Chinese characters within the peninsula. So in other words, uh, while Ko uh, Gao Gu Li, and Baek Zhen, Bai Ji, for instance, have come to represent the linguistic traits of Koreans, the four commanders of the Han dynasty, including Le Lang commandery, have often been neglected from the discussion of Koreans' acceptance of Chinese characters. However, uh, the Han Dynasty four commanders, including the Lolan commandery, as political power bases should be appraised positively from the perspective of uh, the acceptance of Chinese characters. First, uh, Gao Li and Bai Ji have had contact with the adjacent of uh, four Han commanders. Thus, in order to understand uh, Gao Guli's acceptance of Chinese characters, we need to precisely understand how the Chinese characters came into use in the four Han commanderies. And second, it is evident that the four commanderies were built by the Han Chinese. However, it is also evident that those under the administration of the commanderies were not all ethnically Han. Accordingly, they should not necessarily be excluded. Uh, and they means uh, non-Han people. Uh, who lives in the commanderies. Uh, they should not necessarily be excluded from the process of introducing Chinese characters into Korean peninsula simply because they were dwelling in the commanderies. And third point that I'd like to, to criticize is, is, is the existing studies argue that only the Han people in the commanderies had the command of Chinese characters, while the other people, the non-Han general populace, uh, were excluded from the use of Chinese characters. But I think uh, this is the result of misunderstanding. As I uh, discussed below, the distinction between the Han and the non-Han people was not important in the commandery. As many people as possible were to be incorporated into the commandery administration. Meanwhile, it is also necessary to have a specific understanding of uh, the level of Chinese characters when they were first introduced into the peninsula. First, the previous studies have overlooked the various stages of the learning Chinese characters. As you know well, today, various definitions of the literacy are imaginable. UNESCO uh, defines the literacy as the ability to understand, read, and write in short and simple words in day-to-day -day life. However, there are so many stages of literacy. For example, the highest level is to understand and write down the very highest knowledge of philosophy. But the lowest one is just to write down a very simple word, uh, very simple uh, characters. Uh, so the lowest one can be included into the category of the literacy. Now, however, the previous studies overlooked this range of the literacy and assume only a single form of Chinese characters introduced into peninsula at a relatively high level of literacy. So for example, uh, the East, East establishment of the Taishue, this very highest education you know, uh, at the school, as a national Confucian academy, as an uh, educational institution, or the acceptance of the four books, Su uh, Shu, if these things are installed, or right, these things uh, uh, happen to be found in the peninsula, then uh, uh, we may say we, we, the Chinese characters were introduced. But uh, 
but I think it's a problem. Uh, and second, the perception that Chinese characters were always highly standardized, standardized when they were introduced is also problematic. Mm -hmm. In other words, there existed the variations in Chinese characters before they were introduced into Korean Peninsula. As mentioned, the previous studies have generalized the introduction of Chinese characters into Korea while trying to view the usage of non-standard characters as a transformation unique to Korean Peninsula. However, as I mentioned above, it should also be noted that such variations tailored to the Korean linguistic needs of the people were already found in the continental China. It means that old Koreans might have accepted already transformed, chi transformed Chinese. Uh, so I'd like to turn again. So uh, the, in short, in, in briefly speaking, uh, I, I'd like to assert that uh, there were the three misconceptions of the previous studies. And the first one is uh, they like to they attribute the first Korean contact with the Chinese characters to not the Lola. And second one is they tend to neglect the existence of non-Han people in Lola Mandarin. And a third problem is they uh, are inclined to, to simplify the range of using Chinese characters in Lola Mandarin. And they have, uh, there are also another problems uh, neglected in way of introduction. They neglected uh, several stages of literacy from simple one to the complex one. To and they also neglected the various dialects in mainland and China. And yeah, mm, I just uh, criticized the, the previous studies. And with this uh, base, then I'd like to introduce when, uh, the Korean, uh, when the Chinese characters were introduced into Korea at first. Uh, as far as the historical records are concerned, uh, the f first period is the Weiman Chosan, Weiman Chongxian. But uh, it, the, the evidence is so scant. Uh, but uh, the Wei Man, a, a figure who fled from China to Korean Peninsula, has the Yan origin. So it means he is already accustomed to the, the Chinese documentary system. So he and his colleagues may be aware of, uh, might be aware of the uh, uh, this uh, Chinese character. And and his historical record says the Wei Man Chao Xian uh, had, uh, had written a lot of petitions to Han Dynasty instead of the, uh, the other uh, tribes adjacent to the Wei Man Chao Xian. And so if the Wei Man Chao Xian had written the petitions instead of the other people, that it means the Wei Man Chao Xian had already aware of the, the Chinese characters. And third one is there were uh, some um, the written laws. It also means that uh, they, are, they were aware of the, the Chinese characters. Uh, but however, uh, the this evidence is so scant, so uh, I, we cannot dare to say uh, the Chinese characters were introduced in this Wei So let's move on uh, the, the Lolang Mandarin. Mm, it, uh, 108, 100, 108 BC, uh, Han Wu Di uh, perished uh, the Wu Changxian, the Korean in the Korean Peninsula, and they installed uh, the Lulang Commandery in the Korean Peninsula. So, if you see and if you analyze uh, the uh, the system of this Lulang Commandery, we can find a lot more. Uh, news about the uh, introduction of Chinese characters. Uh, so in this session, in this session, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, three things. Uh, the first one is, uh, in the commandery system, uh, there was a very uh, strict uh, principle. That is, the According to the laws of the Qin Han period, uh, all the matters must be managed and kept in documents. Uh, so it means the, the commander system was uh, managed by the, the way of documents. 
And it also says that the people who are involved in this uh, commentary system should be aware of uh, the Chinese characters. And second point that I would like to talk is the literacy already expanded among the general populace, not limited to the Han people, the Chinese people, but also it expanded, it, it infiltrated into the, 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 the general populace, which has a non-Han origin. So it means that a lot, of, a lot of people who are aware of these Chinese characters in Lao Lang community, and, who, and they do not have the, the Chinese origin. And third point uh, that I might talk is, uh, this, uh, as, I, as I just mentioned, the non-Han people were also put into this documentary system. Uh, so, uh, in short, uh, if we just, uh, just due to the time limit, I would like to read, I don't, will, I don't read uh, the PDF paper, but uh, to, to in short, uh, in a low line commentary, there are so many non-Han people, the so-called Korean people, uh, were put into this uh, documentary system. And the documentary system, in documentary system, the, all the matters must be managed and kept in documents. So uh, everybody uh, might be aware of the Chinese characters. Not only the Chinese people, but also uh, Korean people are aware of the, this Chinese character. And third text section of my paper is about the contact with the various usages and the choices. The reason why that I uh, do uh, analyze in this, uh, in this session is, the, just in other words, uh, the purpose of this third section is um, to, uh, to, to criticize the, the previous studies because the, the previous studies uh, asserts that uh, there was uh, just one usage of Chinese characters, which was used in uh, the, the government, the central government. And uh, this kind of the uh, only one usage could be found in uh, the Confucian canons. But uh, as far as I know, or uh, if you just uh, made a reference of the wooden slips, which was excavated in Jian and uh, Dunhuang, uh, there are a lot of a lot of uh, usages of Chinese characters. So um, the first one is the various usages according to region and uh, Christian states. Then I mean uh, there are a lot of a lot of usages according to the region, region to region, and time to time, and the person to person. And uh, the Lolang people, so those Korean people who uh, live who lived in uh, Lolang Commandery had already contacted with these various usages for more than 400 years because these people are already involved in the Junxian, involved in the commandery and prefecture system. So um, after this over 400 years, the Lolang people and Korean people uh, are so used to the custom to uh, these kind of Chinese characters. And finally, uh, they felt the kind of the inconvenience with their linguistic customs because the Chinese characters are not suitable to the Korean people, uh, suitable to Korean linguistic needs. So eventually, they selected the one which is suitable to their linguistic needs. So let me show some, some examples. Mm. The Korean linguists, and uh, including the Japanese linguists, uh, assume that uh, there are uh, there are many examples of the the first inst incipient stage of the Yidu. And if we just consult with uh, the Kaoguli or Baiji inscriptions, and then you can find some very strange Chinese character. The first one is a Zhong. And if you see the Korean one, uh, then you may find it's a little bit different from the, the Chinese one. And they think, oh, it is not a Chinese one, but uh, the Korean invented uh, the, the, the one which, called be, which is called as a Yidu. For example, Jung is not, uh, does not have any uh, meaning of in the middle of, but 
they just take on the, the post-positional locative case marker, like uh, 99 ni. And uh, there's another example is uh, zhi. And uh, as you know well, the, in, in Chinese, the zhi means a pronoun. Uh, but if you see the Korean inscriptions, uh, then you may find there is no meaning at all. But it just have a determinating ending, like uh, in Japan's 99 ni and third one uh, is the jie. Uh, jie means, uh, it, it, in the Korean descriptions, inscriptions does not have the, the Chinese meaning, but just have uh, take up, just have a directing or the subjective particle, like uh, in Japanese, uh, nai nai uh, this, uh, These are uh, the, the assertions uh, which was studied by the Korean and uh, in Japanese linguists. But if you see more closely uh, uh, wooden slips excavated in Jian and, and Hanjian, uh, we can find the same as the Korean inscriptions. If you see the first one, uh, there is a, a one zhong, but uh, this character does not have a meaning of in the middle of, it. Uh, just like uh, uh, just like uh, the Korean inscriptions, they just take on the, the case marker. They don't have any meaning. But uh, it can be found in the Chinese wooden slips, Chinese official documents, not only in Korean peninsula, but in uh, Chinese mainland. And, and you can see the number two, and there is a zhi, and, and this zhi character also does not have uh, any the, the pronouns mean. So uh, what I mean is, you can find uh, more examples which is very similar to the Korean peninsula. So it is not invented by the Korean people, but also already used by the Chinese people. And third one is, is the same as I talked. Jie, mm, if you just uh, if you just see the Korean one, the jie. Uh, for example, uh, in Korean, jie uh, means the, the subjective particle. So it does not make sense. But if you see this, uh, the Han documents, then on uh, jie is the little bit abbreviation of the ji. Mm, so it, does, it has the same meaning. So if you replace this jie with the ji, then you, it, it, it does make sense. So. And so, uh, what I like to talk in this session is uh, the invent the, the some examples uh, which the Korean scholars and previous studies argue that these should be the, the Korean invention of the Lidu can be found in, in Chinese documents, especially the wooden documents, especially in um, excavated wooden documents. And these documents uh, were circulated in the, in the commandery system. And the Lelang Jun, just, uh, the Lelang commandery is also involved in this, uh, the, the empire, uh, uh, the commandery system. So the Lelang Jun people, the Korean people, can, could understand, uh, could have contact with this kind of a lot of usages. Uh, so after all, they selected this kind of Zhong Zhi Ji just because these kind of three things are so suitable to their linguistic needs, so they selected. And uh, they used, uh, used for more than uh, 400 years, and they used it. And after the, uh, the collapse of the Lolang Commandery, uh, Wuli and Bai Ji has started to use it as its own. So um, lastly, I'd like to conclude my session. In short, briefly speaking, in previous studies, I said uh, the Korean skull, the Korean and uh, the Chinese characters has been introduced, had been introduced in Koguya, and a small amount of elites who has who had uh, the Chinese origin introduced Chinese characters into Korea, 
And the time will be the after the flow of Chinese refugees. So it, they neglected the Lowland Commandery, but just uh, said uh, after the, the collapse of Lowland Commandery, they, there the Chinese refugees uh, came into the, in the Gaogoli, and the uh, Gaogoli people, Korean people, started to know about the Chinese characters, but it's not. And uh, they also talk about, talk that, that said that uh, at that time, the, the level of the introduction, uh, level of Chinese character, level of that time should be very high. So they said uh, 400 BC, uh, 400 AD, and Taixue and, 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 and Sanshu Wujing has been introduced into Korea. So it means the, the uh, it means the, 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 the introduction of Chinese character. But I said, I'd like to assert that not in Korea, but in Lalan Commandery. And not a small amount of elites uh, who has the Chinese origins, but a number of non Han people, and not the after, not the after the flow of Chinese refugees, but the people, non Han people, Korean people, who were trained in documentary systems for over 400 years, and not in a very high level, but in a very simple level, you can see the Chinese characters has been introduced into Korea. Okay, thank you.